I started last week talking about understanding generational curses. And we know that in some places, this is, these are very important things that happen in people's mind. That most of the misfortune, the bad luck, the bad thing that happened to us is caused by our ancestors, is caused by our forefathers, caused by our, our fathers, whatever they, they may have done in the past that have consequences on what we are suffering today or what we, we are going you know, today. And um, some few examples where you've got uh, some kind of a disease that runs through the family. Like in, in some family, uh, many people die of a certain disease. And we talk about a, a generational curse because you see the trend or something bad that happened in that family. M most of the time, they always die young, you know, or um, they always miscarry or they're always, um, they, 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 they don't finish the studies. Uh, in that family, there's no one who's got a degree. Uh, in that family, you know, you, you, you just see something bad happening in, in, that, in that family. It might be your family, it might be your, your, your life. And we, we, we think that is what we, we are, we are just the victims of what has happened in the past. And you've got doctrines where a man of God, a pastor, a prophet, we take you through a certain spiritual uh, journey, spiritual cure, to, to cure you or to deliver you from generational curses. Um, in some cases, people have been able to do incantations. They have been able to do uh, different things. They, they, they have to fast for this many years so that they can break that, that chain of curses. And last, um, last week, I told you that generational curses, I showed you in the Bible, don't exist. They don't exist. So if you believed in generational curses, if you believe in it, I just want to show you that that's not what the word of God says. And what they use usually to talk about, to say that there is generational curse in the Bible, these are the three verses I shared with you. I'm just recapping a little bit. These three verses, three of them, they talk about God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. So when you read this, a lot of people, they have inter interpreted this as being God punishing the children for the sin or the iniquity of the forefathers uh, to the third and the fourth generation. The problem with this is that we have uh, interpreted the, the word visiting, the iniquity, we have interpreted it to mean a curse. And uh, God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children is not to do with curse, simply because the word visiting the iniquity does not mean curse. A curse is something that is different. And what is a curse? I've told you that a curse, it is the power to fail. Or God, when, when God empowers someone to fail, that is what a curse means. But we have seen that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter you know, 28, the Bible talks about the blessings that will come upon those who will obey God, but also the curse that will come upon those who will disobey God. So when you disobey God, what comes is the consequence of that disobedience. It is a curse for you to fail. So but in this case, God is not talking about placing a curse on anybody. The Bible says he's visiting the iniquity. And it was also important to understand what is the meaning of iniquity. We, make, uh, we made a difference between sin, transgression, and iniquity. We said that sin, it was to fall, to fall short of the mark. 
That what sin is. Not to do what God asks you to do. It is a sin. And we say that transgression was trespassing. Your trespassing is when you, you go over your limit or you, you, you sin against somebody or somebody's property or somebody's something. You know, that's what trespassing means, going over, uh, over the limit. The Bible does not say that God will visit, in, uh, that God will vi visit transgression. The Bible does not say God will visit sin. The Bible says God will visit iniquity. So what is iniquity? The difference between a sin and transgression and iniquity is that iniquity is a sin that is committed over and over and over again to the point where that sin has become part of your behavior or part of your, 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 your character or part of your personality. There are those things that we do which are sinful, but because we have been doing them over and over again, these things, they have become iniquity in the sense that it's not just a sin, but it has become a part of us. It has become part of our character. And we don't even realize that that is a sinful behavior. One of the simple examples I gave last Sunday, it was that, you know, we don't, we don't always consider this, but every time uh, we, we fall short of the mark every time we fall short of the mark and we do it in a consistent basis to the point where we don't even realize that it is sinful. That is what iniquity is. So just think, think of, the, of the things in your life that you have been doing over and over again, but there has been a sin, but because you just don't care. They have become part of you. They become part of your character. They become part of your personality. Now that is what iniquity is. And this is what the Bible says. This is what God will come to visit. Not to place a curse, but the Bible says God will come to visit that iniquity. In other words, God will come to visit the sinful behavior that God has noticed towards our forefathers. God will see if that sinful behavior is still going on upon their children and the children of the children to the third and the fourth generation. In other words, whatever we're doing, we may have inherited that from our own fathers or our own parents. And whatever you are doing, you are passing it on your, your own children because they see what you do. The problem is to the third and fourth generation, they're not even going to realize that what they're doing is sin. Why? Because this is what they've already, they've already seen their forefathers doing. If you are born in a family and in that family, they, they are abusing drugs, for instance. If you, let's say if you're born in a family where cannabis is being used. So you, you are a child, a baby. You are growing up with the smoke all over the place. People are smoking weed and all that. When you grow up in that family, it becomes part of you. It becomes just normal. So children, they will pick up from what, what they see. And this is what God is saying. He's saying that, you are living in iniquity. It means that you are, you've become so sinful. Your behavior has become so sinful that you don't even realize it. And God will come to see if you have passed it upon the, your children, upon the children of your children, and that that what causes a curse. In other words, it is a consequence of a sinful behavior. But it's also important to understand if God is saying that I will come and visit upon the children and the children of the children to the third and fourth generation, God does not say that I will punish you for the sin of your forefathers. God is saying I will come and visit and see if in every generation they are still doing what their forefathers used to do. In other words, if my father was an idolater, God will come and see if my father has passed that idolatry to me. But if God comes and see that I don't worship idols and I worship the true God, that punishment is not going to come upon me. God will punish my father, but I'm not going to be under the curse. Why? Because I have changed my behavior. I have not picked up on sinful behavior that I have got from my forefathers. And I said that that's why it's so important that we as parents, we as uh, adults, we set a good example to our children because they will pick up upon what we are doing you know even when it comes to dieting or the food and all that they, they will pick it up you know 
my diet is mostly what my mother used to cook for me. It's exactly that. I have not changed a bit because I struggle to move and to shift from another diet. Well, and someone else who's come from a different background, it will have it will it will have a different diet. But we're just talking about diet. Well, we're talking even, we're even talking about the way that we speak. You know, in my family, everybody raised their voices. Not in a bad way, by the way. It's just, it's just, it was just our nature. In fact, when we were talking in the family, people thought that we were arguing. But we were just talking. I don't know if anybody has come from that sort of family. Yeah? So we, 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 all, we all raise our voices. So even when I'm trying to make my argument, I always speak louder. And you can notice that even my tone right now is just, it's just high. Even when I try to control it, I'm tr I try my best. And sometimes I have a problem with my wife most of the time. Every time she goes like, please, can you just, can you just speak a bit? I say, mama, you know how I speak. <laughs> you know. You know, because sometimes it may sound like I was angry or I was upset or I was just being disrespectful. No, it, I grew up in that environment and, and I struggle. I really struggle. It, it's a pain trying, trying to speak in a tone that, that people will. You, you see, that's why we, we, we have to bear with one another sometimes. Because we come from different backgrounds and some people have picked up behavior from their families. They picked up and God is coming to visit that sort of behavior. God is coming to see Charlie. Have you picked up on that way of speaking or you've changed? Because if you haven't changed, there will be consequences. You will have people that you're going to lose just by the way of speaking. Just by that way of talking. You will lose your wife. And when you say that losing someone is not necessarily in terms of Parting company, but sometimes you just lose some, someone in the sense that that person does not even pay attention to you anymore. You speak, but it's gone. Because you've lost that person. And the Bible says that it's so important that the behavior, your behavior, is not iniquity. It's not a sinful behavior. That you make sure, consciously, you are passing on your children the sort of behavior you would, like that you would like to see them doing. And I give you the example that, you know, we were growing up every Sunday. Mom or dad, they, they would put some money in our hands to go and give offerings. Not because we were working. We did not have, we, you know, we were not working. As children, nobody expected us to give any offering. But what they were doing, they explained to us, we are doing this so that you understand when you're going to the church, you don't go empty-handed. You take something to give to God. And now the problem is, when you get used to that, even when they do not have the money, before we go to the church, we will always remind them and go like, Dad, can we have our offerings? So... But it is a behavior that they wanted to teach us. And a lot of things that we see in the word, it has, it's just passed from one generation to another. And the problem is sinful behavior, even sinful behavior, are being passed upon every, every generation. And I say this is what's happening in schools. It's happening socially speaking. It's, it's happening on the TVs. When you look at the programs, the, the way the programs are, are designed, the, the way that our children are educated in school is to make things that used to be acceptable to make them to be acceptable. Why? Because the more you are exposed to something, you get used to it, and you pick up on it, and you begin to do it as if it was just normal. But it is a sinful behavior that we have picked up. And this is what God is talking about. But this is not, this is not in any way or shape, it's not about a curse. God does not place a curse on anybody. But, because, you know, before I, I moved uh, to, to, you know, to this teaching... Last Sunday, someone asked me a question that I, I thought, like, I need to maybe share with you because every time we talk about this, a lot of people, they will be thinking about some stories in the Bible and go like, yeah, but that one is a, was a sin. And someone told me that God placed a curse on, on, on Cain. Do you know the story about Cain? Uh, Cain killed his brother, Abel, and we, 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 the person told me, but God placed a curse on him, but you're saying that God has not placed a curse on anybody. So I thought that I will answer that question. Maybe someone may have it. And this is the passage that talks about uh, 
or Cain. The Bible says, so when he killed his brother Abel, the Bible says, so now, God speaking to Cain, so now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. When you look at this verse, I don't know how anybody will see that God is placing a curse on Cain. God is not placing a, case, a, a curse on, on Cain because the Bible says now you are cursed from the earth. God is not placing a curse. Earth is placing a curse upon Cain. Why? Because the Bible says, because the earth has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood. You've killed your brother and the earth has, has, has opened its mouth to receive that blood. Now that earth is cursed for you because you will be laboring, but you're not going to have anything because yourself, what you've done, you've just made that earth unfruitful because of what you've just done. So if he did not kill his brother, the blood or the earth would not have taken the blood. And the earth will still be blessed. But the earth became a very bad place because of his behavior. And that emphasizes what I'm trying to tell you. We are not cursed by God or by our forefathers by what they do. We are cursed from what we do, from what you do, from what I do. That's where the curse is coming from. That, that's where you know, Cain was, 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 you know, was suffering the consequences of his own action. But moreover, that curse of Cain was not passed to generations. That curse was upon him and him alone. The Bible does not tell us that his children they suffered because he killed Abel. That is, 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 is other generations in the future they suffered because of what he did. No, God punished him. He did not punish next generation. So we don't suffer the consequences of, 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 you know, the consequences of our forefathers' sins or whatever they did in the past. We don't suffer from it. We suffer the consequences of whatever we are doing right now. And this is the confirmation. When you read Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, The word of the Lord came to me again. And this is a prophet, you know, talking to the people of Israel, saying, what do you mean when you use this proverb, this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord, God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. The soul who sins shall die. What God is saying to the people of Israel is that the people of Israel used to use a proverb. And that proverb was that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children teeth are set on edge. In other words, the children are suffering the consequences of the, what the father ate. Whatever they ate in the past, now all the children are suffering. Why they were saying that? They were saying that because they were going through a difficult time. They were going through a difficult time. It was just like a curse was on them. Because Israel was delivered to the enemies. They could not overcome any enemy. They were failing in every area. They were not successful in anything. They were just struggling, suffering, and all that. And then they kept saying that proverb. They, they kept saying, we are suffering the consequences of what our fathers did. And how many people they use this until today? How many people sit down and, and see what's going on in their own lives? What's going on in their own families? And say, we are suffering the consequences of our forefathers. And sometimes, and especially if a prophet told you that um, your father was a witch, or your mom was a witch, or your father or your mom 
practice witchcraft or they practice some kind of you know sorcery or they, they you know they practice some kind of 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 I don't know you magic and and things like those when you think of those you go like oh yes now I understand why all this is happening to me so you can see what you know what's happening in your life and people use this to say but God is saying no 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 don't say that you are suffering the consequences of what your fathers they did because look at the last sentence there the Bible says the soul who sins shall die in other words only the person who has done wrong will die so you, you know probably if my father did something bad to God God has already punished them if my mom did something bad God has already punished them if my forefather did something bad God has already punished them but God cannot pass that curse or that punishment upon me that's what God is saying and if I carry on reading from verse 14 the Bible says if however he begets or brings into existence we're talking about uh, a man or anyone in Israel if he begets a son who sees all the sins which his father has done and considers but does not do likewise and when you look at this sentence you can see that what God is saying is that if you bear a son, if you bring a son into existence, and if that son sees your sins, if he does not see your iniquity, if he sees them, but he does not do likewise, he does not do what you used to do. And this is so important because this is what I'm, I'm saying, that when we set a good example to our children, they're going to carry on doing a, you know, good stuff. But when we set a bad example, and the Bible says that when your children see what you do, and if they, they carry on doing it, they will be under the curse. But if they don't do likewise, that's what the Bible says, if they don't do likewise, and the Bible you know, goes on to explain what it means by likewise. I'll carry on reading from 15. A child or a son who has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife. A son who has not oppressed anyone, nor withheld a pledge, nor robbed by violence, but it's a son or a daughter who has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing. A son or a daughter who has withdrawn his hands from the poor and not received usury or increase but has executed i think uh, i have to move with my yeah but has executed my judgment and walked in my statute now listen what's going to happen to him if you don't do what your forefathers they did if you don't do the sins of your forefathers what's going to happen the bible says you shall not die. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, robbed his brother by violence, and did what is not good among his people, behold, behold, he shall die for his iniquity. The Bible cannot be clear enough. The son who has seen his parent doing something bad, but then he does not copy that behavior, but he chooses to do something right. The Bible says he shall not die for the sin of his fathers. You will not suffer the consequences of the sin of your fathers. So in other words, God is telling you and me that if you are obeying God, if you are loving God, if you choose to, be, to do the right thing today, you are not under the curse. Your parent may have been suffering in the past. Your parent may have been suffered from anything. But God is telling you, you're not going to suffer from it because you have made the choice and the decision to do the right thing. And again, we don't suffer 
We don't go through disease. There is no such a thing as a generational curse. There is no such a thing that God will treat you bad because of what your forefather did. God treat us according to what we are doing right now. So the question is, if we, there has been some misfortune, if there have been some bad luck, if there has been some bad stuff happening in my family, what I have to, to do is not to go and look further up in, the, in my family, but I have to look inside myself. I have to go and do some kind of an introspection. Look into yourself and see what's going on inside you. Is there a sinful behavior? Because it's so important to understand that sometimes sinful behavior are not always obvious. The things that bring a curse into our own lives, they are not always obvious. We, we, you know, as I said last week, because we have seen other people doing them in our family, we've copied the same behavior and it has become a part of ourselves. And we don't even consider that as a sin. We don't consider that as a sin. But there are quite a lot of things that we do, the way that we speak to other people, which is very sinful. But we've copied, we've, we, you know, we've taken them from somebody else. And when, you know, we keep doing this, there will be some consequences because every sin brings some consequence in our lives. Every sin brings some consequence in our lives. And there's nothing that God hates as much as sin. And the Bible calls us to live a life where we fear the Lord, where we fear God. And I always say to myself, if God is your God, how much do you fear him? How much do you say to yourself, oh no, what I'm doing is wrong. I don't want, no, no, I don't want, I don't want to do this to my God. I don't want to do this in the eyes of my God. You know what we usually do? We prefer people not to see what we're doing. And we hide. And sometimes we, we pretend to be holy. We pretend to be righteous. But behind the scene, the way we live our lives, is not right. The problem I always say that is God who sees you wherever you are. God sees you wherever you are. And if there's anybody that you have to fear, it's God. That's what the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. You know, people who fear people, they are not wise. People who are wise are people who fear God. Because they fear the one who can destroy and the soul and the body. A man can touch your body, but cannot touch your soul. God can touch both and your body and your soul. So who are we fearing? Because the problem with God is always to look at upon his children and to say, you are mine. And you are confessing that you are mine. But how much are you honoring me? How much are you fearing me? How much are you giving me glory in your daily life, in your daily walk, in the things that you do? How many things? And the Bible has promised you in, in, in you know, Deuteronomy 28 that if you obey the Lord your God, blessings shall follow you. Blessings shall follow you. But if you disobey your God, then a curse shall follow you. A curse is not removed by some kind of prayer. A curse is not removed by some kind of deliverance. A curse is removed by obeying God. That is the way that's how we deal with a curse. If I'm under the curse, if there are things that are not going on in my, in my life, I don't go, if you go to prayer, if you go fasting, Please fast that God will reveal to you those sinful behavior in your life. I wonder how many people they fast to God just to ask God to open their eyes so that they can see sin, sins in their lives. But you know how many times we, see, we, we fast and we pray for God to bless us. I've got an interview, a work interview. I'm going to fast for it. I've got, I've, got, I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got something that I have to do. I will fast for it. We fast and we pray. But how many times we pray, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see the wrong stuff in my life. I'll just pray that, you know, if we were all doing this kind of, this kind of prayer, how many people will be blessed? And when I'm talking, I'm talking about blessing, yes, I'm really talking about proper, proper blessing. Because what God, 
wants you and me to do is to remove anything that is not pleasing him. Anything that is not honoring him, to remove it from our lives. But God can realize that we care more about the things that he can give. We care more about the doors that he can open, but we don't care about honoring him, giving him glory. Saying to ourselves, Lord, I want to live my life to please you. I want to live my life to honor you, to glorify you. This is how I want to I wanna live my life. And I, wanna gu I can guarantee you, everyone who walks righteously before God, they walk under the blessings of the Most High God. And this is even better. Nobody, even the devil, cannot do anything about it. The Bible tells us about Job. That he was a blessed man on earth. No one was, was blessed like this man. And one day the devil come around God to gossip. And God having his meeting. God says, where have you been? Oh, I've been on earth. Have you seen my servant Job? And can you see how God is so, he's so proud of his servant. I just pray that God will look down on you and begin to give a testimony of you. And say to the devil, have you seen my son Adelushi? Have you seen my daughter so and so? I just pray that God will see you. And I wonder how many of us God will see and the devil comes. Instead of God asking the devil, but the devil is asking God, have you seen your son of yours? Or have you seen the daughter of yours? Because the devil is happy to see you dishonoring God. But God is happy to look down and to see you. But by the way, when God was asking Job, the, uh, was asking the devil about Job, Job did not know the conversation, how he was, you know, it was going. He was not aware of this. But God asked the devil, have you seen him? And what was the answer? Oh, yes, of course, I've seen him. But you know what? I know why you're asking me that question. Because that man obeys you. But you know why he, he obeys you? He obeys you because you've blessed him. Yes, of course, he was blessed. Because he was fearing God. And God says, oh, you know what I want to tell you? You can go and take all this stuff away. In other words, God knew that, that this man was not... <coughs> Or honoring God because of the blessings. He was honoring God and obeying God not because of the blessing. But he was obeying God because he loved God. This man did not have, did not have to fast. He did not have to pray 40 days. He did not have to go into deliverance session. Nobody delivered Job. Nobody prayed for Job. But Job was blessed. And today we think that just by by the hands of a man of God, everything changes. And one day, the Bible is still the same. God treats you individually. In other words, God will bless me for what I'm doing. And God will bless you for what you are doing. Even when I'm, I come to curse you, if you are blessed, you can't be cursed. Because nobody can curse you. And the devil put that to test and say, I tell you what. I'm going to take everything away from Job and see if he's still going to honor you. And God says, okay, you go, you do, it, you do it, you take everything, but don't touch his soul. And the Bible says he went, the devil attacked this man. He attacked this man badly. The way that this man was attacked, he lost everything. And you know when you've got a lot in your life, you've got beautiful cars, you've got beautiful homes, you've got beautiful clothes, you've got beautiful family. You know, the Bible says he had children, he had his wife, he had a beautiful life, everything was good. When they take all this away from you, you feel nothing. You feel like you are nobody. You are, you know, you, most of us here, we will suffer. We will, we will struggle. We will struggle to get up in the morning. The Bible says he lost everything to the point where even his body was touched. He was so sick that the Bible says that even dogs were coming to lick his wound to that point. And one of his friends came to him and said, man, you have done something wrong to God. This is not right. You have done something wrong. And Job said, no, I have not done anything wrong to my God. You know, when people are looking at you and say, everything that is happening in your life is because of a curse. Is it because of a curse? Because God has placed a curse upon you. God has placed a curse upon your family. What do you do? Most of us will say, of course, God has placed a curse. Because all this is happening in my life, it would not have been happening if God did not curse us. But Job did not say that. God, you know, Job understood. 
It was not the curse coming from God. It was not the curse coming from anybody. And they say that the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In other words, I will carry on obeying God. I will carry on honoring God. I will be still righteous. I will still honor God, even in my pain, even in my difficulty. And the consequence of that obedience was that the Bible says he was given the double of what he had before. Even more blessing. Even more blessing. Double blessing. Why? Because this man just say, blessing shall come from obedience from the Lord. Blessing shall come from obedience to the Lord. If I obey God, I will be blessed. You will be blessed if you obey God. You know, I wish I can shout this on top of, on, 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 on the mount, you know, on the top of the mountain. Obey God and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Obey God and you will be blessed. It's not going to just happen just because someone prayed for you. It's not just going to happen because you went through deliverance. You know how many, I've been speaking to a sister who told me, Pastor, if you knew how much money I spent in my life giving to men of God, you won't believe. She said, because I feel like I have to confess, I feel like I have to, to admit. She said that she will usually move from one man of God to another man of God. From one prophet to another prophet. And the last one was in London. I said they were praying over the phone. Then they were praying online. She wanted a change in her life. He wanted something to change. Uh, to the point where this man of God went like, oh, look, we, 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 we need to pay for the, 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 the what, you know, the, the whole. Would you send some money? Would you give this money? And this sister would be just giving and giving and giving and believing that by giving, God will think about those givings and bless her. But nothing ever changed. Then I looked at him and I said, the blessings of the Lord are free. They don't cost a penny. The only thing the bless of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord will cost, it costs obedience. Obey God and you shall be blessed. Wow. Why people will spend thousands of pounds giving to people for a blessing that never gonna come. And the Lord these days looking at you, he said, It's free. It's free. I can bless you. I can bless you. You can be fruitful. I say you can be fruitful. People are looking at you. They say, where all this is coming from? What is he doing? What, is it something that the people will be looking for your secret? And you will look at them and say, my secret, I obey God. Whatever the Lord tells me, I listen. And I obey him. And I don't let anybody to take me in the wrong path. Because the blessing, the, the blessing of the Lord shall enrich, and it does not come with any sorrow. And just to, to, you know, to finish this reading, the Bible says, and I believe that it's talking to you, it's talking to me as well. The Bible says, yet, from verse 19, yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Why the son shall not suffer the consequences of the guilt of the father. You say that. And this is the reason the Lord is saying. The reason why you can't suffer the consequences of your father's sins, the Bible says, because the son has done what is lawful, lawful and what is right. And the son has kept all my statutes and observed them. He shall surely live. He shall surely live. Why I can't suffer the consequences of my father's sin is because I don't do what my father did. And if I don't do what my father did, then I'm never going to suffer the consequences. But here's the problem. If you're doing exactly what your forefathers they did, you're going to suffer the consequences. If, I grow, if, I, if, I, if you've grown up in a family where people never worshipped God, if they worshipped idols, you grow up, you make sure that you break that chain you begin to worship the true God of Israel. And from the moment you begin to worship the true God, things begin to change. Because you are not doing what your forefathers they did. If you lived in a family where people used to go and see sorcerers, 
You live in a family where people believe in magics. And even when you, if you grow up in a family where people believe in traditional, traditional healing, because I know there are some tradition, there are some people who believe in the ancestors' way of healing and doing stuff. Where, you know, if you're suffering from any kind of bad luck, you have to go back to your village where they have to cut a goat, they have to cut an animal, they spread the blood and make, and some people even drink that blood. These things are witchcraft. Proper, proper, you know, witchcraft. Witchcraft practices. And it still exists until today. And the people are suffering the consequences because God hates all these things. If we carry on doing these things, we will suffer the consequences. You have to make a decision to say, I will walk by the Bible. I will live by the Bible. I will do what God says, and I'm not going to do what my ancestors said. I don't care about what. There are people who will say, oh, no, I will listen to my ancestors. Yes, you can listen to your ancestors, but you know what? They had the sinful behaviors. They had sinful life. Most of the things that our ancestors they did, you know what? They did not even know the Bible the way that we know the Bible today. And most of them, they never had the opportunity that we do have to meet Christ and to see the Bible. Most of them, they are spiritists. People who believed in some kind of a higher power, but they did not know the true God. And they were doing things that they were, it, it was abomination in the eyes of God. Do you know they are in some country where people still offer, I even heard in some part of Africa where people killed, you know, albinos. Do you, you, know, you know albinos? Is a, do you know albinos? The way you're looking at me looks like I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing here. Am I saying the right thing? Do they call them albinos? Albino. What, albino? Albino. Yeah. what, albino? Yeah. Albino? Yeah. Ah, now I see why you're looking at me. <laughs> albino. Now I see why you're looking at me. I know. You know, when I say something, when I say something bad, I know I've said it. Because I look at you, that you cannot. <laughs> it's just quiet. No, alb albino, is it? Yes. Albino. Right. <laughs> albino. So, in some, in some part of Africa, they use, they kill albinos because they think they've got some kind of power. They kill them and they use the organs for different reasons. They will eat it. They will use, I'm telling you this is true. And some, some part of Africa, if someone has given birth to albinos, they have to hide their child. Because at, at the same time, he becomes a precious treasure yeah. to all those people who believe in a, some kind of a magic power that these, these children they may have. But you understand that this is just ignorance. It has nothing backed up you know, scientifically. But it has been it's something that they, say, they have been doing for many, many years. Then when you bring them the gospel, you say, all oh, these things are sinful to God. They are abomination to God. They say, what are you talking about? And they carry on doing this stuff. That's what the Bible is talking about. If you carry on doing these things, then you will be under the curse. But if you make a decision today to change your life, if you make a decision today, I'm not going to go by what I've seen my ancestors doing. I will do what the Bible says that I should do. I will live by what the Bible says that I will live. Then my life will change. Let me just finish with this uh, quote from the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14. If my people, if my people, the Bible, you know, put it in conditional. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive the sin and I will heal the land. What a good news this is. What a good news this is. The Bible says that if, only if, you humble yourself before God, you pray and seek his face, and most importantly, if you turn from your wicked ways, those wicked ways that we learn from our ancestors, we learn from generation and generation. Those wicked ways, the Bible says, if we turn from, from them, what's going to happen? Blessings shall come upon you. The Bible says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sin and I will heal the land. And you know what? 
Sometimes we suffer the consequences because even the land when we, where we are trying to sow, the land is contaminated. The land is not purified. We are doing our best. We are working hard. But the, the land is now yielding crops. We are working hard, but we don't see the result. When we see how hard we're working with what we are, we are reaping, you know, the harvest, the harvest is, is, is really minimal. It's really, really small. And you, you say, Lord, what's going on? The Lord says, if you turn from your wicked ways, I will heal the land. And your land will be fruitful. You will sow just a little and you will bear more fruit. There will be a, the harvest will be great. This is a good news for you and me. We should turn away from our wicked ways. Should we just bow our head?